I've done several bike rack reviews lately, and in this video, we're gonna look at a really unique rack. It's the Velocirax Vertical Bike Rack. I've been using hitch racks for over 15 years, and this is the first time I've ever tried a vertical rack. But it's very unique because you can get the four bike, and if you decide later on you want a five, six, or seven, you can get the hardware to make it into a four, five, six, seven, whatever kind of rack you wanna use. What's also unique about this rack is you can carry four e-bikes. It's the only four bike rack that I know of where you can carry four e-bikes. Now, if you get the seven bike version, you can still only carry four e-bikes. Something else that's pretty unique about this rack is it has a wall bracket for your garage. So you can mount the rack up on the wall bracket. So it's not only a place to store the rack when you're not using it, but it's also bike storage. So that's pretty cool as well. So what we'll do in this video is we'll put the bike rack together. I'll talk about what it was like to put it together. And then really just the first impressions of seeing what it looks like on the vehicle, mounting bikes and you know what it looks like with bikes on it. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. It is a week later because as soon as I got the rack put together, it started raining and never stopped the whole weekend. So I've actually got the rack on the wall right now. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the wall and then we'll put it on the vehicle. Now, as far as building the rack, it was pretty straightforward. I mean, there's a few bolts for each bar and then two bolts for each of the wheel trays. And by the way, I don't think I said this earlier, but I have the four bike version because that's typically the maximum number of bikes we need to carry on a trip. And also I'll show you the spot that I have on the wall. I think a wider one would not have fit. So I won't really go too far into it. You can check out the website for Velocirax, but there are different spacings you can get. And you actually need a wider spacing between the wheel trays for a road bike because of the way the handlebars are shaped. You can get the five bike version that has 15 inches between the wheel trays. And again, that's what you would need for road bikes. And as we look at the rack, there are some contact issues depending on which bike you have and the configuration on the rack, but it's not too hard to figure out where to put each bike. Putting this thing on the wall is pretty straightforward. It's real easy to put this rack on the wall. All you do is you walk it over and just put it in those hooks. I'll go ahead and mention something here, and that is the screws that came with this one stripped out really easily with a drill and you really have to use a drill putting these into the wall because even though we drilled pilot holes, they were still going into the studs pretty tightly, which is what I wanted. So we actually ended up using deck screws and that worked really well because of the Torx head. Now I reached out to Velocirax. They said they actually have redesigned these screws and are including new ones. So I probably got the older ones. All right, now it's time to put this on the car so I can show how the bikes look on the car and talk about some of the features. So this is what the rack looks like when it's in the garage with no bikes on it. So what you do is you undo the dampers at the bottom, which I'll show how to do when it's on the car. It's really easy, it's just a pen. And then you flip it out of the way, that way the bottom of the rack can rest on the garage floor. This is a two person job by the way, because this is a pretty heavy rack. Slide in the pen, we'll put the lock on. Then you tighten the outside bolt with a 17 millimeter socket wrench. Now we need to engage the damper. The only reason you disengage it is when you pull it off the vehicle and put it in your garage. So it's got this little pen to just kind of hold it back when it's disengaged. So we're just gonna rotate it up, push down the dampers, put them right there and just put the pen in, really easy to do. And then you've got this pen to determine how far back the rack tilts when you load the bike. So that's gonna be maximum tilt, that's shorter. And then this bottom hole just completely locks it so it will not tilt back at all. So I guess that's kind of a safety feature. So I'm gonna put the pen in this hole and then you can rotate this and just kind of lock it there into place. This is what the rack looks like on the vehicle with no bikes installed. So we're gonna drop it down to load some bikes and what you have to do is you have to pull down on this lever and then you can pull the rack backwards. Now you do have to pull it when there's no bikes on because the dampers are that strong, which is a great feature because when you've got bikes loaded on this thing, if it didn't have the dampers, the rack would drop back suddenly. And so without bikes, you've got to pull on it to get it down. 
now the rack is in the loading position and I've got the pen set so it tilts back the furthest. And you can lift up on that lever again and drop the rack all the way to the ground and put it in what Velocirax calls camping mode. So that rests those wheel trays on the ground so that you can put the back tire in the wheel trays when you're not using you know, the bikes. You can just have them setting aside again when you're at the trailhead sitting around or when you're camping. To load the bike, you just lift up the front wheel, just kind of put your knee behind the saddle, lift the bike up on the rack. Now, if this is the first time that you've loaded bikes, I would recommend not doing the straps yet because you want to look at contact and see if you got to switch some bikes around. Now we're going to load a trail bike. And this one does have contact, so I'm putting this on second so you can see what I'm talking about. So with both of these bikes on, you can see that there is a slight potential for contact right here. I'm going to switch the order of these bikes because when I do that, there is no contact at all. So in this combination, I've got a ton of clearance between this brake lever and the top tube of the other bike. Now I put a cross country bike with a high top tube on the third position. And you can see this will not work because that brake lever definitely makes contact. Now with this combination, so we've got hardtail and then full suspension trail bike, that won't work because you've got the stem that can make contact with this lever. So I found a combination that'll work for these four bikes and it's even tight. So the last bike, if I were going on a trip, I'd probably wrap a towel or something around that top tube. Trail and enduro bikes seem to be just fine. It's when you get into cross country bikes with higher top tubes and flatter bars, that's where you run into a problem. So in theory, you could have a bike fleet that does not all fit. So my recommendation would be, if that's a concern, get the five bike one with the 15 inches between the wheel trays and I think you would be just fine. We'll do the wheel straps. Now we're ready to push the rack up. So just grab the bikes, push them up, and that pin will lock into place. This is what it looks like with the bikes on and ready to drive. So now my SUV looks like a North Shore shuttle vehicle. So pretty cool. So I will say that the tires sit fairly high especially on my vehicle because the hitch receiver is taller than I've had on other vehicles. And that puts the tires just a little bit too tall to go into the garage. So I would not be able to pull into my garage with the wheels in the upright position. I could drop the rack down if I wanted to, to pull into the garage, but I most likely would just not pull into the garage with bikes loaded onto this bike rack. And by the way, with this rack up, the brake lever did make contact with the top tube. So all I have to do is put a rubber band on this. Now, what's nice about this rack compared to something like the Kuat NV 2.0 four bike version is that the saddles don't make contact with handlebars. So the only thing that you've got to think about on this bike rack is up at the top where the handlebars may contact a top tube. But for some bikes, like look at this enduro bike that's in the process of getting new grips on, but there is a massive amount of clearance between that bike and the one next to it. This one, still good. That's just gonna depend on the bar width, the angles, how long the wheelbase is, all of that you've gotta consider. But I think for most people, you're gonna find a combination that works. With my gravel bike on next to a mountain bike, I've got a ton of clearance. I'll try putting on one more drop bar road bike and see what it looks like. So with two drop bar bikes, we run into a problem. So the first one next to a mountain bike is fine. It's the two road bikes next to each other where you're gonna have contact with the brake lever and the frame. So with the bikes loaded, they're, they're pretty steady. I mean, they'll, they'll shake back and forth just because you're using a tire up at the top and it can move a little bit, but uh, they're pretty sturdy. So we're gonna go for a drive and we're gonna see uh, if they move around when we're driving. For added security on a drive, I'm gonna put the pin in that position. On my test drive, I started off by going around a curve and then moving the vehicle back and forth across the road. The bike swayed slightly, but definitely not anything to be concerned about. Then I went off into the grass, so I'm probably going like 25 miles an hour here. So this is the off-road test, the gravel road test, and the bike stayed pretty solid. And then I got the vehicle going up to about 45 miles an hour, and the bikes were perfectly still, no issues at all. Then I turned into my driveway and I went off into the grass and I hit a divot, a little pothole coming up here. 
and I did have the cross country bike make contact with the bike next to it. And this is rougher than anybody should ever encounter on a road, but I wanted to test it out. As you'll hear me say coming up in a minute, it did hit the top tube. When you need to unload the bikes, all you've got to do is release this lever. And I find it's sometimes best to just pull back on the rack a little bit or push back. That lever will release and the bikes will drop down really slowly because those dampers are allowing the rack not to fall back too quickly. I'll give my final thoughts on this rack. So for me, this is not an everyday rack that I would use carrying a bike back and forth to work. For that, I would use my two bike rack, which is a Saurus MTR or a Kuat NV 2.0. This is a bike rack that I would use when I'm going on a trip where I'm carrying at least three bikes. Now the clearance issue is a bit of an issue for me. In fact, when I was doing my test drive, I thought I had enough clearance between the cross country bike and the one next to it, and I didn't, and I got a little scratch on the top tube. So my recommendation is if you're using cross country bikes, road bikes, get the three bike version or the five bike version that has 15 inches between the wheel trays. If you're carrying enduro bikes and trail bikes, I think you're gonna be fine. So the advantage of these racks is that you can carry up to seven bikes, which you cannot do on a traditional bike rack. You have to use a vertical rack for that type of capacity. So that's where the advantage comes in. The bike rack is super solid, super sturdy. I don't have any concerns about the rack not holding up or bikes not being on there securely that's not a problem and i really like the garage storage option i think a lot of people are going to be able to utilize that so those are my initial thoughts on the velocirax vertical bike rack a great option if you're carrying at least three or four bikes and up to seven bikes so have you used this rack let me know in the comments below your thoughts on long-term use and i'll follow up this video most likely with a long-term review of the rack thanks for watching